Ladies and gentlemen, the next session will begin shortly. Please take your seats. Wow. Hope everyone's well. Uh, could you just go back one slide, please? I keep on talking. It's okay. I just want to, if you could just go back one slide, please, yeah? to the holding slide for lunch, the blue one, just the slide before. The bl blue slide. Okay, that one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, look, uh, we're, we're about to start. So, please, if you want to keep on talking, <laughs> please do. Um, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good. Uh, so um, this is, uh, we, uh, at GSMA, we actually have um, a, a program called the Four Years From Now. Okay, it's a startup program that we actually, um, ha we actually have a, a gathering and uh, an area, exhibition area in, um, in Barcelona, MWC Barcelona. Okay, so um, if you're interested uh, in actually being a part of this, um, this movement, uh, you know, you can uh, contact our sales. Um, you can type in four years from now on the, on the internet, and you'll be able to see some introductory information about the uh, about our startup initiative. Um, so yeah, uh, when you have time, check it out. If you've got any questions, let us know, and we will direct your inquiry to our relevant uh, sales guys, sales team, because we actually have many startups are flying in uh, from all around the world to, to participate in the mobile free. Uh, pardon me, MWC Barcelona event, and we do have, actually have a huge um, area um, in Hall 8 uh, in Barcelona that caters for, for all the startups. Okay, so that's uh, just a bit of an ad advertisement here. Um, and just wh whilst we're waiting, we've got two minutes to go. Um, uh, just uh, uh, if you can just uh, be uh, a little uh, patient with us. We're waiting for a couple of more speakers to come in. Mm, oh yeah. Um, come in. Um, just before, uh, I think some uh, some of you um, uh, may not have been here this morning. So this uh, this uh, digital transformation acceleration summit has three parts. First part is a, an opening panel discussion, and be before that we had three keynotes. Second part is this one for uh, one and a half hours nonstop. Okay, five minutes of pitching by really innovative startups, and the third part. Uh, is a closing panel discussion, okay? Um, now, the, we actually have ten, 11 panels, panelists from the opening panel and the second panel, and these panel uh, discussants, the, uh, they're sitting over here, um, and so about 10 of them will be the judging panel, okay? So no bribing, please, all right? No bribing, all right? <laughs> oh, you're open, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, that, that's a judging panel. And just to reiterate, um, we have four verticals, four verticals, uh, four startups from four verticals, namely ESG and sustainability, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, intelligent cities, and health tech. Okay, and so we will um, uh, these ju these judges will you know mark you um, on uh, five criteria, which I'll show in the following um, slides. Um, I'd like to share that with you, with you in, uh, by email, and then we'll collect, uh, we'll um, aggregate the numbers and come up with the winner, winners of the four verticals, four of them. And out of those four uh, winners, the, the the one with the most number of points wins the grand prize. Okay, and uh, I mentioned this in the morning, but 
the prize, so the, the four winners from the four verticals will um, have, uh, uh, you know, uh, a complimentary pass to either MWC at Las Vegas or MWC Shanghai. The, the, the uh, grand prize winner will get a complimentary pass, a pass to MWC Barcelona. Okay, so, and of course, we have plaques and so on, and, and we'll be, uh, you know, promoting on our, uh, on our uh, SNS and uh, on the internet, so you guys can make the most of, you know, taking part in this activity. All right, so hopefully um, you'll be happy with that. And uh, just before we begin, I think everyone's too quiet. Please don't go to sleep. All right, <laughs> coffee it up. Yeah, good, good. Get some Coke or whatever, caffeine up, please. All right, so before we start, next, next thing. All right, so before we start, let me introduce you to um, uh, Sachin Jang. He is the managing director from GDIN, uh, previously called uh, Global, uh, uh, Born to Global. GDIN stands for Global, uh, Dig Global Digital uh, Innov Innovation Network, right, okay? And uh, Global Digital, Digital Innovation Network, um, uh, Born to Global, um, has, has been an innovation uh, partner with GSMA and Digital Transformation Acceleration Forum uh, for the last, uh, say, 24 months. And we'll be working together with these guys to really promote, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the promote uh, very innovative startups from all around the world. And, and, and for these startups to work with, uh, you know, existing mobile operators and uh, traditional uh, leading vertical players to further enhance digital transformation across the board and across the region. Okay, so um, please welcome uh, Sakjin Jang, and he will be the moderator for the next hour and a half. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you for filling up the room. Um, I'm Sokjin, um, but I'm not the important person here. We have 16 amazing uh, startups with us, not just from Korea, but from Asia and the Pacific. Another important thing is that, um, and as you can see, these are amazing technology companies, ranging from areas like artificial intelligence to intelligent cities to life technology and ESG and sustainability. And as the theme of this MWC Seoul, or sorry, M360 Seoul is to build digital nations, we, I can by far guarantee you that this is a single most important session of M360 Seoul because we are giving you the technologies that will build digital nations. As an example, uh, some of you remember the two uh, startups that pitched this morning, the keynote speakers, Rebellions and Bear Robotics. Exactly one year ago in Singapore at M360 last year, those two companies were among the 16 that pitched during our session. So it's only natural to think that out of these 16, we'll get the next Rebellions and the next beer robotics. And I can guarantee you, having looked at their pitch decks, that the next 90 minutes are not going to be boring in no way. <laughs> so to kick this off, uh, we've arranged the order in terms of AI, intelligent cities, life tech, and ESG. And to start off, it's my great honor to show you the first uh, presenter, Korean company, but now he's heading the Korean joint venture in Lao PDR. And here's Coconut Silo. Come on, Tony. Um, hi, good afternoon, Sabaidi, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tony Han, CEO of Lao Small Mobility. So it's a, such a great honor for me to how we are digitizing the world's most, one of the most poorest country in the world into digital. So Lao Small Mobility is a joint venture company formed by Hyundai's in our startup called Coconut Silo. And the biggest, one of the, uh, no, actually it's the biggest, biggest private company in Lao PDL, um, Cola Group. As you can see, um, Laos is a young and um, country with young and small population. And moreover, it's one and only inland country in ASEAN, meaning that it has a huge pot potential as a mobility hub in Indochina Peninsula. Um, however, um, some problems must, must be solved for Laos, Laos to become a mobility hub in Indochina Peninsula is that they don't have public transportation and price like um, ga gasoline prices is increasing periodically, and they're also suffering from um, economical inflation, 
and joker of coin inequality throughout the country. So to solve the problems, we've developed a smartphone application called um, Gokong Mobility along with a sustainable mobility method called EV Duk Duk with IoT devices attached. So the services that we are providing right now is the ride hailing services, instant delivery, um, parcel delivery, logistics, and add-on services like battery swapping services or eBay vehicle um, battery charge and selling the vehicles with financial programs attached and so forth. So the benefits that we are providing in, um, throughout the country right now is that since we are providing ride hailing services and mobility services through sustainable mobility method, so that customers can use the services with affordable price, which is around like 50% of the mobility services that um, like um, gas, um, um, gasoline vehicles provide. And of course, since we use the electric vehicle, it's of course e eco-friendly, and we've created, created more than 200 jobs and also we are connecting the entire country into one and we also through the AI technologies and smartphone application that we provide, we are transforming the country into digital. And one thing, to, one thing that I want to emphasize is that um, we are not only providing smartphone application but also AI technologies such as auto price suggestion, like route, uh, route optimization and IoT um, device, uh, since IoT device has been attached so we can like modify the driving status or um, developing the vehicle itself on the, to the better condition. Of course, as mentioned, um, Laos is one of the poorest country in the world, so they cannot afford um, some like kind of the money to purchase the vehicle or something like that. So we've made additional business deals with local bank so that we can provide um, financial programs with really low interest, which is around like 5%. So um, upon the foundation last year, we've, as mentioned, we've created more than 200 jobs in total, and we have around like um, 15,000 orders that we created to 30, around like 30,000 customers in total. And I think in the end, uh, by the end of this year, we are expecting to have like around um, 100,000 customers in total with 200,000 orders with 5 million US dollars revenue in total. So it's the future plans that we have right now. Um, actually, we are providing our services throughout the country, Lao PBR, but we are also preparing to launch in Thai, starting from Udon Thani, Konken, and Phuket. And especially Udon Thani and Konken, they are um, having similar um, cultural aspect and cultural ba background with Laos, so that we think it's, it might be quite easy for us to expand our services. And from 2024, we'll start um, expanding our services in both Cambodia and entire Thailand. And by 2025, we will provide cross-border services in the entire China, in, inside Indochina Peninsula, meaning that we might be the first and or the only company that will provide um, cross-border um, cross mo mobility services throughout the region. So it's what I've prepared today. Um, it was, again, it was such an honor for me to present how we are changing the, one of the poorest country in the world into digital. And we are really excited and thrilled um, to provide not only mob um, mobility services and the logistic services, but also kind of other public transportations in the future. Th um, again, I'm Tony Han, CEO of Coconut uh, Laos Smart. Sorry, Laos Smart Mobility. Thank you. Thank you. That was Laos Smart Mobility. By the way, these guys are professionals in building joint ventures with mobility technology all over the world. Now let's move to indoor mobility. And many of you have been to MWC and how I know and you probably know how difficult it is to find the right food indoors. Our next company precisely solves that problem. Here's papaya for you. Hello everyone, I'm Paras, you can call me Thai, I'm a CEO in Papaya, and I have a decade of ex uh, experience in uh, location service. I, uh, I, had a char I ha was in charge of director uh, of strategy and marketing for Kakao Maps, which uh, th more than 30 million people use every month. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about uh, my new business, the indoor positioning system. Uh, you know, these days the buildings are getting bigger and complex, and you, you don't know how to get to your destination. And Google, um, 
global big tech companies like Google and Apple has, have been uh, competing to take a, a dominant in this field. Uh, basically, we are doing tracking where people are going. Uh, with this, uh, this is why Google gives you Google Maps for free, and they collect the data from you, and they know where you are going to go. And this, uh, and we are uh, very prepared. We are prepared to uh, immediate uh, drive our business outcome. Outcome, and we are focused on indoor visitor behavior market. A uh, concession algorithm is our core alg core algorithm own algorithm that uh, it is a AI based uh, uh, algorithm that uh, collecting all the wireless signal in the building like uh, Wi-Fi or GPS or GNSS uh, Bluetooth and also we have uh, sensors in smartphones like gyro sensors and acceleration and even pressure so we collect all the all the these sensors to uh, figure out where you are. Uh, and we help our partners to collect their uh, customers' uh, um, data. So um, basically, we have three uh, business models. The first one is personal data, such as maps and routing data or uh, flow, uh, flow plans. And we are working with the Korean government. Uh, and we, we uh, with the uh, current government, we are implementing our technology to tra train stations and museums and uh, department store in Taejeon. And we are going to expand uh, nationwide next year. And the second, behavior data. Uh, we are now uh, actively uh, discussion with Starbucks Korea. And uh, Starbucks, what Starbucks Korea wants to do is they want to know, collect the uh, visitors' data for analyzing uh, how long they stay in every each uh, Starbucks branch. So with that information, they can adjust their interiors or uh, make new branch in, you know, already Gangnam Station has like more than 10 Starbucks though, <laughs> they, they want more. And with this uh, information and data, we can expand our business to advertisement and marketing area. And they are my proud team. And my co, uh, my founder and co CEO uh, Daniel is uh, also had multiple decades experience in location services, and was a uh, director in uh, neighbor maps as well. And we have uh, we have assembled uh, experts from in the field of in engineering and technology from Kakao and KT um, and SK SK Telecom. So these are uh, our milestones so far, and we are going to have uh, 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 generating more than twenty million dollars in five years from now on with uh, the uh, in positioning data and behavior data and also the marketing area. Uh, and we are now uh, outperforming and uh, dominating on any other competitors in uh, this uh, indoor positioning uh, technology uh, in worldwidely. And we also have featured two SSI journals, and also we uh, we are going to add one more this year. And we have uh, like multiple patents in Korea and US and China. So thank you for listening to my presentation, and I hope um, please feel free to reach out for any inquiries. Thank you very much. And we really hope to see Papaya at our MWC app next year so that we can find the right booth <laughs> right away. If you guys are from the GSMA, let's get them to MWC next year. Um, when people talk about AI, uh, a lot of our partner companies talk about smart factories. And there are millions of ways how AI can you know, create smarter factories. And here's ITNJ to show you how. I'm great to honored to be here. Uh, I'm the CEO of ITNJ. I've been with a manufacturer for 20 years, and I try to solve their problems. I want to introduce about the challenges in manufacturing. Oh, it doesn't work. Is there anyone who knows about the hyper personalization? Hyper personalization is a strategy that finally tailor product to an individual reference and want. 
take a look around you. Is there anyone who wears the same shoes as like you? We buy shoes not only cons uh, considering not only the purpose, but also styles and the functions, materials, and value the brand offers. It means that one person do not create just one market. Now one person can affect several markets even more than 10. This market shift provides the supply with a great opportunity and risk at the same time. Moreover, there are changes in career choices. People seek job uh, for personal achievement rather than just uh, earning money. For this reason, it's challenging to find unskilled labor in manufacturing. This change made the man manufacturing company left with no choice but to transform. Need a system as flexible as a human but capable of mass production. Also need a system that can address the shortage of uh, unskilled laborers. What we can provide to the manufacturer? We provide deep learning solutions specifically focus on quality inspection and equipment predictive maintenance. Our manufacturer customer is more than 1,214 global partners we have. We are growing 30% uh, every year. VRI from the Thailand, a specialist in ro uh, robotics, automation, and IT system. We prov they provide IT infrastructure solutions and belong to the PKF groups. Our first tier supply for Toyota, there are more than 900 employees. Now the CEO and the vice president in here now, they are from the Thailand. Thank you very much. <laughs> IT engine and VRI, two leading company, uh, met and uh, shared the vision and they decided to establish joint venture now. We aim to build a total solution that can address, uh, uh, enable to flexible and intelligent manufacturing. To resolve this issue uh, that manufacturers face today, we have installed automation system with IoT sensors. We aggregate data such as uh, vibration, temperature, voltage, pressure, logistic information, vision data from the inspections. This raw data can be processed to AI optimized data this data will be trend, uh, trained by deep learning algorithm as each function. Each function notify information to operator what to do. And all it operates itself in able to control by communicating with the robots. We build on automation in the field. Based on real time data, we know what's going on in production. If any problems occur, we know what is it and why from the data. Also predict will what will happen in your picture, with the help of predictive, we can easily respond to any upcoming issues. It monitors the entire manufacturing process to detect the defect or more function, including areas that cannot be found by human. This time series data informs you of possible defect or more function in production too. It analyzes workers' behavior pattern to find hazard and alert to take a precautionary measure. Data pattern change prediction technology also can identify defects in um, advanced manufacturing area industry too. This technology affects productivity. Our customer benefit from the enhanced user experience. The global uh, robot and the automation market is growing rapidly according to, to the research. It's, uh, uh, it will reach 1.2 trillion USD dollars. Based on our problem solving, solving capability and a sense of uh, a strong sense of awareness, we have been chosen and engaged by many global clients. We cooperate closely with them and solve their problems. Our core value is a burning passion and the challenging beyond the limit. No matter what difficulty we face, we never give up and eventually overcame the hardship. We actually learn by experience. Customer satisfaction is achieved by constantly taking on challenges, following out our passions, preserving through all circumstances until the very end. The, this represents the most precious value we strive for. Today, I'm not here. I'm free. So yes, I'm look forward to sharing the next chapter of our story to you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Z Crypto. Can the partner company from Thailand also stand up? Can we have a round of applause for the Thai partners that are also here? Excellent. Um,
I think, I think that really tells us what these companies do is we collaborate. We don't like companies that look for export markets. That does not work in technology. It's all about tech collaboration and localization. And that's what precisely the Global Digital Innovation Network does. Uh, last in our AI machine learning agenda, let's talk about voting. Uh, digital nations, yeah, maybe sometime in the future everybody will get to vote digitally. But there are so many challenges. Our next company, first time in the world have tried to solve that challenge. They're called Z Crypto. Please. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I am Hyorago from the Z Crypto company. Uh, I'm talking about the ZK voting, which is a, a public blockchain based e voting system with zero knowledge uh, proof technology. Okay, do you know that uh, this year uh, CS was uh, selecting the three important technologies to solve the problems facing hum humanities? One of them is uh, GK voting, which is a uh, public blockchain based voting systems. The reason why the CS was selecting the voting system uh, is that um, we know that uh, in the world there are a lot of dis uh, distrust and social confusion after voting and tally. Uh, the reason is, this kind of confusion is that people don't believe the electoral systems. Sometimes they are believing that the uh, electoral system is hacked. In addition, actually there is uh, some manipulation by uh, voting administrators. Admin for instance, 2017 there is uh, some uh, voting manipulation uh, by the Japanese uh, in the di Japanese diet election. Actually, that is happening in the private sector voting also. So that uh, we are developing a new voting system, which is called the GK voting. Um, in this voting system, we are providing the integrity and also uh, privacy and end-to-end -end verifiability using zero knowledge proof uh, technology. Uh, we got the best innovation award in this uh, CS, and also our voting system is adopted by uh, Korean Central Election Committee in this year. So every Korean people will be using our uh, voting system in next year in public sectors. So let me uh, introduce about the technology detail of our uh, GK voting. You know that if we are storing some data on the public blockchain, then we can see the all the data, which means that there is no privacy. So uh, if we are storing the, uh, the voting or ballot on the public blockchain, then we can check that is counted and that is completed, but uh, there is no secret voting. So before we are storing the data on the public blockchain, we have to encrypt it. But after encrypting the date, uh, ballot, then we cannot check whether that ballot is correctly constructed. For instance, we don't know that that encrypted ballot is from the valid voters, and also the encrypted ballot is contained the valid message. So Zero knowledge proof is ensuring that the correctness of encrypted ballot. The zero knowledge proof is guaranteeing that that vote is from the valid voter without uh, leaking the, the voter's identity. And also it is guaranteeing the correctness of the vote. Uh, Gcrypto is developing this kind of uh, privacy preserving application on the public blockchain using uh, zero knowledge proof technology. So one of the main uh, sector is uh, voting system, and the other one is also we are developing some application related with the finance system. For instance, we are developing the uh, auditable uh, private preserving digital asset transfer system, and also we are developing some proof of reserve uh, systems. Okay, I'm Hyunwoo from the uh, G Crypto, and also I'm professor in the Hanyang University in Korea. Uh, I'm researching about the this generally proof. Uh, cryptography a few uh, many years and then uh, I want to commercialize our technology so I started the Zcrypto uh, in two, uh, uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, currently we have uh, 26 people and we are getting larger and larger. Um, so finance related item uh, for uh, items like uh, uh, Azeros which is uh, uh, giving the privacy and also uh, auditability. So this kind of technology is adopted by the uh, Bank of Korea CBDC uh, privacy solutions. And another one is the proof of uh, uh, reserve. Uh, you know that uh, last year there is a FTX collapse 
uh, incident. So uh, this technology is uh, providing the uh, providing that the central exchanger has the uh, sufficient fund to cover their customer balance. We think that uh, the voting market is growing so much, and also we can expand the uh, voting market. And also finance sector is uh, increasing a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, look, I if you don't understand the concept of zero knowledge proof, don't worry, because many of us don't either. Uh, that's why we have the networking reception. Go talk to him. They have great technology. I still don't understand the deck, but it's okay. It's, it's proven it works. So let's see how we can uh, work with uh, Z Crypto. Um, next, let's move on to the vertical of intelligent cities. And flying in all the way from Japan, it is my great honor to present to you iRobotics. Hi. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kazunori Saito. I'm a co-founder and a CFO of iRobotics. So uh, thank you for having me today. I'm pr uh, uh, Global has a problem right now, especially in the developed countries. Uh, we have a lack, uh, lack of labor force, and we have a uh, obsoleting infrastructure. If you look at the U United States, you know there is a, a oil leakage from oil tanks, and there is a bridge, huge bridge collapsing. Uh, everywhere, so so President Biden decided to put 1.2 trillion dollars to to renovating infrastructure, but uh, uh, this is huge. But uh, this also explains that 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 uh, replacing infrastructure costs a lot of money. So are we using robotics as uh, for those you know renovation? Uh, those are very cool, but we have to do step by step. So uh, our solution, uh, our mission is easy. Uh, uh, we are pro uh, solving problems, the global problems with uh, mechanization, and remotization, and automation. Those uh, we need to do in the infrastructure. So our solution is simple. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, if, we, if you look at the construction site, uh, people are doing work with the uh, scaffoldings. Uh, we are replacing with this with robotics. So uh, and and th our robots has uh, functionality to doing uh, paintings and the physical inspection and the, the, those works. So uh, with this technology, we can save time, and we can also ta save money, and we can also save the uh, the people's life. Uh, last year in Japan, twenty thousand people has a uh, you know incident from falling from the high prices, and we are. Uh, uh, eventually, we can save the world with these technologies. So uh, our technology is a consolidated uh, system. So uh, we are using the drone precise control and also harmonized winch controls. We are using multiple winches, and uh, and th there is a stabilization uh, mechanism and uh, you know uh, suctioning system, and uh, and uh, painting spray controls. Uh, uh and, and uh, harmonize uh, uh, those, uh, you know, whole system is uh, harmonized with drones and winches. Everything works together. And the ground stations and controller is also a very important part. So as a system, com comprehensive system, we have uh, the solutions and the patented. So this is the uh, one of the so uh, samples of, uh, you know, solutions. Uh, this is a tank, and this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing the painting for, uh, you know, uh, oil tanks. So, and and our market solution uh, is very simple. We are focusing on largest players in the industry. So we are playing with uh, Nippon Steel. Uh, we are uh, working with Enels. Uh, those are the largest companies in Japan. Uh, Nippon Steel is the largest steel maker in Japan and probably one of the largest in the, in the global. So, so uh, surprisingly, those companies spending five billion USD, more than five billion USD per year for just for maintenance. And if you look at this one, do you know this one? This is Fukushima, Fukushima nuclear power plant. And there is a one thousand, more than 1,000 uh, tanks for wasted water. And we are releasing to the ocean right now. But releasing takes 40 to 50 years. And this is taking 10 years already. And uh, you know, uh, this, these, uh, these tanks are uh, obsolete. So we cannot do this with people. We should, do ha uh, we should have uh, robotics to do this. And, and if you look at the oil tank market uh, in Japan, within Japan, uh, we have 500 crude oil tanks. Those are t 
taking like uh, 40, 50 years already. And uh, if you look at uh, global, uh, we have 25,000 crude oil tanks in the global, and uh, uh, we are replacing, uh, uh, um, if you look at the uh, you know, semi processed goods, uh, we have 10 times more. And our growth strategy is we are currently increasing the number of robotic solutions, and we are applying with our largest players and expanding to others. So that, that's our solutions. So this is a 20th century, uh, century uh, robotics model, uh, I mean the, the work model, uh, device makers and maintenance workers. Those have kind of distance and there is no information uh, you know, relationship. But in, we are in living in 21st century, so robotics is a data platform. We are using data platform and, and, and data platform is self-growing. Uh, self, uh, you know, uh, sustainable model. So uh, we are trying to make, uh, you know, self. Look, Saito-san flew in from Japan just for these five meals. So one more round of applause for Saito-san. Thank you. Great company. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who've been walking around Seoul the last few days, you've probably seen these really strange looking but really smart operating bus stations. And our next company is the company that created that. Here's Dwelling. Good evening. Uh, my name is Claire Binna Song. I am the CMO of Dwelling Global. Today, I will briefly introduce our company, Dwelling. So Dwelling offers the best platform for measuring, monitoring, and purifying uh, ultra, ultra particles. We are experts in specialized environmental care solutions and services, providing uh, fine dust and air quality management. Dwelling prioritizes ESG and sustainability as our key value, and we are preparing for global climate changes. Dwelling's exclusive hybrid technology certified by the Korean Testing Laboratory, an authorized government agency of Korea, removes 99.9% .9 of harmful substances from the air. As a result, when you are inside our green smart zone, you are breathing in fresh air that is free of ultrafine particles, organic compounds, viral, soil, virus, and order. Our two-way electric dust collector that can be Im implemented in tunnels and metro has two electric electrostatic precipitator devices on the side and a UV plasma in the middle. We operate effectively and provide continuous solutions through real-time monitoring and maintenance. Dwelling has never stopped innovating by starting off with establishing our platform with Samsung SDS and LG. We have expanded from IoT air quality sensors to our latest green smart zone. Our products are exclusively installed in the largest medical centers, schools, and even the US military base. Uh, let's look inside our green smart zone. And this is a picture of the actual green smart zone located in Dosandero of Gangnam area of Seoul. It was taken just this week. 
our, mid, uh, our digital media display can maximize exposure to uh, the media. The total exposed population to our green smart zone is 7.227 million per month. Ongoing campaigns, city slogans, regional or local advertisements, and digital contents can be displayed on our platform. Not only is our display profitable, but we also focus on public interest. Uh, with Dwelling's latest Green Smart Zone platform, Seoul has transformed old bus stops into high-end technological integration. We are continuing to transform central and si side bus stops. We currently have 20 stations in Gangnam and 20 more coming in Junggu. By April and August of 2024, we are uh, scheduled to launch additional stations in Gangnam-gu, Seocho-gu, and Songpa area as, as well. Uh, Dwellings platform can serve as an element that can further increase the attractiveness of a city and serve as an inspirational structure. Also, it can become a vibrant and dynamic hub of activities contributing to the social and economic growth of the city. Dwelling also has a control center that monitors the platform on a real-time basis. The center is integrated with all bus service topics of government agency. Furthermore, our IoT platform is remotely controllable and uh, building the foundation for the collection and integration uh, of data from the air purifier and the green smart zones. Our company was originally found based on this IoT platform, thus highlighting our technological uh, expertise. This was the origin from which the green smart, uh, smart zone has uh, derived and, um, and our business will continue to grow into the smarter future. That was thrilling, ladies and gentlemen. So now you know who made those weird looking a bus station. They are talking with other people to expand this solution to other uh, countries. Our next company uh, uses IT to create a productivity and a collaboration platform and actually comes to us all the way from Indonesia. Help me in welcoming Run System. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Budi. I'm chief of product from Run System. For a decade now, Run System has been a B2B solution provider, especially primarily offering uh, ERP solutions, but also a few other products, such as smart procurement system, uh, university management system, and also uh, point of sales for micro and small enterprise. So over the years, we have, uh, we have gathered around 2 million users, and also we have addressed more than 5,000 unique use cases. Drawing from these experiences, we have identified more crucial challenges that need to be solved to accelerate digitalization across industry. To, this is the key so that we can enhance the speed, the flexibility, and also the efficiency of digitalization across industry. Therefore, uh, we identified that business around the world has realized the impact of not doing digital digitalization. Based on Forrester report, more than $41 billion of average loss of not doing digi digitalization. Business doing digitalization for, uh, to scale, to expand, and to monitor their businesses. However, the solution that uh, need to be implemented must be seamlessly aligned with their unique business cases and can be swiftly and easily implemented. This creates the gaps between the business needs and the non-customized solutions that are already available in the market right now. That's why uh, Run System, we, we create a digital platform where it's designed to accelerate implementation and customization of solutions tailored to individual business use cases. Uh, for example, in a uh, uh, last few years, we worked with the biggest Indonesian telco in Indonesia, which is Telkom, to digitalize smart village, not city, but village. We create point of sales for uh, micro and small enterprises using our solutions. We uh, hope that uh, this solution is accessible to from CEO till new hire to create the system by themselves based on their requirement, just by doing drag and drop components so that they create solution based on uh, their requirement. We have crafted the solution based on our uh, uh, decade of experience so that 
we uh, create the solutions based on uh, the use cases that we have experienced, and also uh, we strong uh, have a st strong emphasis uh, to the inter in integration because uh, the solution usually for end-to-end -end solutions we need not only our solutions but also integrated with the existing software they ha they have used before. By having the solutions, at least three benefit emerge. The first one is to save development time. We can save more than 70% of development time. The second one is to save cost because we don't need to uh, pay for unnecessary vendors and IT experts to create the system, simple system for us. And the sec uh, third one, by having the speed and flexibility, we can create the solutions faster to our customers so that we can gain uh, more benefits. This uh, market for the solution, as commonly known as low-code application platform, has been experiencing a, a significant growth in the in the past few years. It has 28% of growth in a five-year category, and in three years' time, the value for this market will reach 46 billion dollars. We possess the solutions, and we are trying to bring the solutions to the global market by various channels. But the most important thing is to build ecosystem uh, based community, which is we're doing that by having hackathons, marketplace, and also partnering with application and distribution partner. For example, right now we are uh, doing some uh, partnership with the Google market so that our solutions and the application that created by our solutions can be uh, market in the Google marketplace. We are diligently refining our solutions uh, to solve the key issues in the uh, business, and we hope to be the leaders in the bringing the solutions to the world. Our, our expectation is we can help business of all sizes, because in Run System, we believe that every business is unique, and the solution must be equally unique too. Thank you. Run Systems from Indonesia. Thank you. Right, um, our last company under the vertical of intelligent cities deals with disasters because we all know that not everything is beautiful and smart in intelligent cities. And here's to show you how they do this. Here is Rosetta Tech. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much to GDIM and Mr. Kim, Mr. Zhang, and to GSAM. Uh, for being uh, to invite us. Okay, our company is name is Rosetta Tech from Rosetta Stone. Uh, this is next. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, our company is already going to the global market. We opened the the Hanoi, Vietnam, and the Singapore, and the Silicon Valley, and the Vancouver too. So actually, they are, I'm working on to the IT industry over 30 years. So our company uh, has a lot of technology and a lot of experience in the world. But all the IT is new IT is different from coming AI. So our company is going to AI. So this is our the business model. Okay, what is our product? What our technology is given to your some benefit? So what? Okay, now, now in your apartment, hotel, any factory, doesn't matter, all buildings, your life is after fire. After fire, whole information is going to direct to fire department, okay? They later come in here, or two, 20 stories, 30 stories, big buildings. What are you, your life? What are you, your, uh, your family? It's dying. They are going to the heaven. That is after fire. The fire information, not is direct going to your smartphone, to manager, to fire department. How you save your life in yourself? Our company send information before fire. After fire, that is to save in the hundreds, the storage building in Rote. How you can save? 
Right now, you error, you generation error, have to save your life in yourself with what? Fire information, before firing, okay? So, from today, you have to choose after fire or before fire. Yeah, our company bring that issue from hardware, semiconductor, and platform with AI technology. I already said how we do. Okay, our platform is say DAP, Digest Digital Twin AI Platform. We open the U category in the world, DAP. Not, not DBMS, not any ERP, not any MES, Scatter, a lot of platform in the world. Typically, almost there is the USA has the, the platform. We open new categories, new platform, DAP. Okay, before today, why a lot of people s not say the DAP? DAP is from fire in the apartment, office there, in the factory. But it exists, the fire system is a wire with a line, 20 voltage link to detector. That is not coming out the any data, just signal. Fire, send out the fire department, coming the fire truck, that's all. People is not getting any information before fire or at that times. Our platform gives you before fire, one month before, one year before, what the exact locations, what happened, electronic or humidity or smoking or heater. Our platform gives to you, your family, in your life before fire. Right now, you have to memorize, you want to still living in the after fire or before fire. Have to choose. Our product, our platform brings a lot of benefit to global process. Thank you very much. That was uh, Rosetta Tech. I can guarantee you that they do have solutions that actually show you how you live after the fire. They just didn't have the time, but you will have time to talk to him. Uh, thank you. That brings us nicely to our third vertical of the day, which is life technology. And the next four companies actually do save lives. And I wanted to really show you this company first because this company is actually saving lives as we speak with a very, very innovative technology. And to show you how, here's Rocket Healthcare. Yeah, I'm start talking about organ regeneration. By the way, I'm not a mass scientist. So I'm going to start with a story of a man from Paraguay who has suffered from uh, diabetic foot ulcer for a long time. Let's just call him for Mr. Fernando for now. And Rocket and uh, Sanatorio Hospital doctors made a um, joint team to regenerate his skin by using Rocket's uh, AI organ regeneration system. The result was uh, superb. Uh, the wound has not been healed for a long time. For years, it has been completely healed. So I'd like to walk you through how we did it uh, briefly. The brief uh, wound cleanup, we use AI wound recognition system to analyze uh, volume curvature shapes um, using uh, real-time in um, AI cloud computing. And after measurement, AI tells surgeon how much patient's own fat is needed. Then we process fat to get rid of unnecessary oil, blood, water, but concentrate protein complex that is going to be used as a material to print regeneration patch. A surgeon needs to do just a press print button, and then bioprinter start printing regeneration patch. Then after printing is done, surgeon just need to put the right orientation on patient's wound. Yeah, like that way. And then put the dressing, patient go home.
So total five steps, wound recognition, bed harvesting, processing, bioprinting patches, and transplanting, uh, dressing, dispatching. So as you already saw from Mr. Fernando's case, our efficacy is more than 90%, and this is an absolutely safe process because no side effect material comes from patient's own fat. And thanks to AI system, everything can be done in one hour. So to prove that, we published already six papers, and also including cartilage, nine papers total. Also, we uh, finished uh, major regulatory approval, including FDA, CMDR, and uh, country-specific ones. So our business model consists of three components, AI system, bioprinter, and disposable fat processing kit per patient, which is our main business model. We, we reach out to many people, but so far, 25% of that many people suffer from uh, diabetic fever ulcer, and if the foot is not healed, need to be amputated. But after amputation, death rate goes up to 50% in five years. So as of today, we rocket commercialized in 21 countries, including South America, US, MANA region, and Asia region. Rocket technology is broadcasted through national uh, broadcasting system. Um, speaking about market, Diabetic for also treatment market estimated to be $6 billion market, but this is not total market we aim for and help um, because organ regeneration system also can be applied to degenerative cartilage regeneration, uh, which is estimated to be uh, maybe 10 times bigger than diabetic for also treatment market. So it's about a 60 billion market um, size. So si big enough to sh um, aim for significant market share. Sorry for the picture after your just lunch. I'm sorry. So this is the result of our clinical trial for cartilage regeneration. Complete regeneration after 12 months follow-up. Patient couldn't take the stairs because pain, but now complete regeneration, he runs and takes 30,000 steps per day. So I'm pretty sure everybody here knows more about what is really going on in telehealth market today. Fast growing, high potential, but still limited in these areas. So I want you to imagine how is this mobile AI organ regeneration unit can expand telehealth market as well as catalyzing the emergence of the untapped markets. So this is my final words. Invest technology to affect your life. And invest rocket organ regeneration technology so you can run if you like to run at your 100th birthday morning with your great, great children. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now you know, we are like right in the middle of our 16 companies and you know why I put them right here because it does wake people up and I've seen it happen. So uh, our next company comes all the way from Sweden. They've developed a new innovative way for intracardiac pressure monitoring. Did I say that right? Here is Akorai. Yeah, thank you everyone. Amazing speeches so far. Um, so my name is Don. Uh, I am the HR manager of Akorai. And we are developing what we believe will be the new standard in heart failure management. We're based in Sweden. And uh, me and my partner is actually right, right now here in Korea to expand the market. The, so the problem in heart failure today is that there are inadequate monitoring tools to measure these patients. This leads to a lot of costs for the healthcare system, but also that the problem starts even before these patients come to the hospital. Uh, the patients are being diagnosed too late, and when they are being diagnosed, they remain, un, uh, they remain unstable and might still be in the hospital. And then even after they are in the hospital, they might come back. We know that there are the intracardiac pressures is a good way to measure these patients, but right now they're only expensive and invasive, and invasive solutions on the market. So this is our solution. This is the Acura Heart Monitor. It's a an FDA breakthrough device designated solution, uh, and the, it's the first handheld, scalable, and non-invasive intracardiac pressure device. 
The technology behind the accurate heart monitor is what we call the SAVE sensor system. So this is combining four different sensors, seismic sensors, acoustic sensors, visual sensors, and electric sensors. These combined with our AI system and machine learning system can produce the direct measurements of intracardiac pressures. Uh, we have vali validated the solution in a clinical study in Europe with 400 patients so far, and we have proven that this device can measure with the same accuracies as invasive solutions can do right now, and higher accuracies than, for example, echo that is usually used in the hospitals. We've done a lot of research about the customers. Um, we have done interviews with cardiologists, administrators, researchers, and much more, and we have found that this they would really like this solution based on the accuracies we have been able to prove so far, but they would also be able to buy this device without the need for reimbursement. The market is big, the market is growing, and we are targeting a global service addressable market of 10 billion right now, focusing on US and Europe, but also here in South Korea. So the competitors, as I said before, they're either like cardiomancia, they're invasive and they're costly. Or we have the other ones like Cardiosense and Sensidia. They are non-invasive, but they can't measure the right things for the patients. So this is where we come in. We, we are the only one that can do this thing non-invasively, accurately, and to a lower cost. So right now, the company started 2019 in Sweden. We have entities now in Sweden, UK, US, and we plan to open up another entity here in South Korea. Uh, we have the hardware developed, the machine learning and AI ready. Uh, as I said, we have the FDA breakthrough device and we have finished our pilot clinical study. We also have an ongoing continuum clinical study globally, um, which will be in US, Europe, and potentially also here in Asia. Uh, the whole solution is granted by uh, is protected by patents, mostly in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, to date, we have around five million dollars of investments from around the world, even here in. Uh, we don't have anything in Korea, but in Hong Kong and Taiwan. In the future, we plan to finish our clinical study, get uh, FDA approval, and then CE marking. That is for U.S. and Europe, and then do a market launch in 2025. So this is the team. Uh, me and my, my colleague Johannes is here in Korea right now. Our management team is scattered around the world in Europe and in the US. And all of them, or many of them, have experience from taking medical devices to market before. We have an amazing clinical team and uh, advisory board, and we have investors from Europe and US within the field. So right now we're actually raising money. You can come to me and discuss that. I don't really have time to explain it right now, but uh, please come to me and join us solving this problem in heart failure around the world. This is Akurai uh, from Sweden. Our next company in our uh, life uh, technologies vertical really does not need any explaining because they are called health on cloud. So I'm not going to talk anymore. I'll let him do the talking. Come on, Mike. Hello, everyone. OK, so Health on Cloud is focused on medical education, the most important, and virtual healthcare, primarily in emerging countries. Okay. So in order to do that, you need a really good team. So the founder and the brainchild behind everything we do is Dr. Sang Hun Jung. Former director of Seoul National University Bunung Hospital, which is like the top of Korea, the Harvard of Korea, if you will. And he's the current president of the Asian Society for Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgery, which gets you all of the world's best heart surgeons, lung surgeons, all through the hospitals. We have Dr. Unsum Park. He is a thoracic surgeon by trade. However, he's a big nursing educator in Korea, and education is a really big thing for him. We have Dr. Anis Ahmed in Singapore. He was president of the Robotic Society for Thoracic Surgery in Singapore, but runs a global uh, nursing program, primarily in Southeast Asia, where he tries to educate in nursing and other things. We have Dr. Ralph McKinnon. 
he is actually in the UK out of the MFT, which is the largest teaching trust in the NHS, where essentially he's a director of simulation, and he also collaborates globally with all the leading children's hospitals, primarily in simulation and education to teach and give back. We have Dr. Sergey Kim, who's based at Seoul National University Budong Hospital, but also focuses on CIS countries for consulting. I wanted to start with this slide because network is everything in healthcare. If you don't know the right people, you're not going anywhere. It's very hard to entry because it should be. It's healthcare. So we try to collaborate as much as we can. So the vision, metaversity, cloud hospital. Technology is amazing, and education could be spread everywhere. Through COVID, everything stopped. There was no medical education. No one was allowed in an OR. Everything just halted. And with the latest digital technologies, getting it out. So we're trying to put that together to bring it to the masses. We started in 2001, a Smart Hospital Alliance, which sees some of the world leading hospitals. First, we started with R&D <coughs> before commercializing and making it grow. So we have about MFT, about 12 hospitals in the UK. Northern Care Alliance, four. Alder Hate Children's Hospital, one of the best in the world. They're collaborating for surgery education. We have Seoul National University. We have uh, Asa Medical Center. We work at NUH Hospital in Singapore. We work in Colombia on a big project right now. We're doing a feasibility study. We're going into rural areas like the Amazon to educate and do teleconsulting and also to the US. Teleconsulting is a little bit different. We're trying to educate the doctors. We're not trying to go in and take money from a hospital or suffering. We want to go hospital to hospital to hospital, doctor to doctor to doctor to patient. So we're going to advise the doctor on how to give a proper diagnosis. Not going to try to give them on the patient because education is the key to offering health care. Not going in and making some money. So this is kind of how it works. We have a lot of support from global partners. As I mentioned, we were in Colombia. I just got back. We're doing a big feasibility study supported by the government and financial institutions. We're essentially, we're trying to do consulting where we want to integrate what's possible. We're going to work around, around regulations to insert things that we need from partnering third-party integration, but also work with what they have, work with local regulations to make sure we get everything proper. This is a feasibility study that's going to take us further. Now, I believe medical education is everything. So we've started creating this as our platform. It's immersive medical library, where it's essentially, it's Netflix for healthcare, as I would call it, for demonstration. So picture the world's, all these hospitals I've told you about, creating content where they're going to put surgery education available for everyone so that they can see the latest technology, medical device, nurses training from the world's best. We're going to manage it like an online university, which a lot of universities have done. Right now, a lot of people are doing their MBAs or business or degrees using online platforms. We're also creating customized tests, PowerPoint presentations that have an AI instructor so that they can get in, localize it, they can get the cultural differences added and different things. Here's an example of some of the surgical videos we're doing where essentially, if the video plays, you can see here, this is actually at Seoul National Budong Hospital where there's a 360 camera and all the important images are put inside. This is so a surgeon can actually study everything that's going on, but also the nursing and support staff. Normally a fellowship involves flying for a year by yourself, learning and coming back. We want to reduce that to a month. If they can train online and their support staff, the doctor could come over get it and go back. He's not going to lose a valuable doctor for a year or who may not actually come back. We also use metaverse technology to deliver education really immersive. This was done in Pusan where we had about 250 doctors from all over Korea join in where they had the world's best educators join online. I'm talking the UK, Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, all through Asia educating doctors because education is the key. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was Health on Cloud. And many of you are probably thinking, well, this is GSMA, this is MWC. Uh, why are we talking about saving lives and, and, and hospitals and doctors? And it's because, and it's the first time actually that we are showcasing these live technologies because this is why we have 5G, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we have 6G. You don't need 5G to watch Netflix. And that is why we are going to continue to work with the GSMA members to bring life saving technologies to the marketplace. Our next company already working with KT uh, creates voice. Here's Humilo to show you how they do this. Hi, my name is Yong Seok Kwan, and I'm co-founder of Humilo, uh, the voice technology startup. The voice technology have a large field, and we are focusing on connecting the IP holders and the platform owners. So let me begin. Uh, let's begin with some references. Oh yes. 
So we are co-working with SM Entertainment and make the uh, Espa Navis, uh, which is uh, virtual human voice, and it is also included in some movies. The voice was the our voices. Like you can see some uh, fine in many movies of the uh, Espas. And we are making the de-aging boys uh, in the advertisement project with the KB Live Insurance commercials. Um, uh, she is the actress of the Korean and the old... Uh, what's that? That's for the old yeah. And also we restore the voices of the uh, Steve Jobs. But you know what? Hey, it's April Fools. Like that. And we are co-working with KT and make a voice platform and it supports seven languages of TTS. And this is one with the uh, YouTubers. Even in South Korea. Hi, my name is Fabian and I'm from France. And he record his voice South and make Korea. the TTS of his, his own. Yes, and what makes our business so special? We provide voices with scriptless two minutes of training samples, which is very optimized for the high specialty voices like celebrities or disease and so on. And it only requires 18 hours of uh, training the, those voices. And synthesis time is approximately less than one second. And after that, we provide the exact reproduction of timbre, emotion, intonation, and tone. Uh, so let me hear you some original, which is ground truth one. 그들은 팬들에게 무한한 사랑을 받았습니다. And the TTS one. 안녕하세요, 에스파 은토입니다. Like that. And the also the other emotions like cute. 내가 자장가 불러줄까요? This one is uh, original one. 알려주라, 궁금하단 말이야. And TTS. <laughs> Angry, uh, angry emotions, original one. 내가 그렇게 말하지 말랬지. And the TTS one, which one I did. And also, you could train in one language, like Korean or English or whatever you want, and it supports nine languages. So it is both the TTS, the Korean and Japanese one. 아침에는 항상 우영우 김밥을 먹습니다. 김밥은 믿음직스러워요. 재료를 한 눈에 볼수 있어 예상밖의 식감이나 맛에 놀랄 일이 없습니다. This was the Korean TTS. 아서 하이즈 모영 김밥 보다 내 맛. 노리마키 같은 옷이 되지. Similar timber and emotion. 세상에 이게 뭐야? 이말로가 이번에 내 목소리를 복사했다지 뭐니? And the English one. Oh. Oh my God! Himalo copied my voice. Yes, like that. Can you see the difference? <laughs> Uh, can you hear the difference? <laughs> so we are focusing on two, uh, I said the IP orders and the platform owners. And the platform owner uh, have a needs on voice resource and the voice engine. So for the voice resource, we create, we really, uh, we build a SaaS platform with KT and uh, publish to the users as a B2C platform. And the, th and the voice engine needs uh, like voice actor AI voice actor, so we supply those on the mail list. And the IP holder, these uh, have a need for removing human list for IP and making a connect between user and the IP holder. So we supply the Navy service and the TTS and so on and the other, like that. And the visual maker needs a virtual human with the voices. So we have, uh, we create sinners with technical collaboration with those things. So our plan is to make synergetic business between the flagship partner, which is uh, platform owners, and the IP partner. And we are uh, making those with short-term lab projects with IP partners and use some shareholder network. And with the IP, uh, platform owners, we are, uh, we are sales, selling them our technology based on the expertise of ours. So we are focusing on three markets. First one is a premium voice restoration. And second one is selling voice production. That was Humello, uh, ladies and gentlemen.
Uh, we are already at our last vertical with only four companies left in the area of ESG. And to kick this off, all the way from Singapore, I give you a company called DevTalk, which actually creates sign language using AI and digital. And to do that, here is Ali. And we need to have extra, extra uh, um, applause because he's visually challenged and we need to show him that we support him. Here's DevTalk. Hi, ev everyone. My name is AQ, and I am the co-founder of Deaf Talk. And uh, we are here to bridge the communication gap for the deaf community. Just imagine if you visit to a doctor, but unable to explain the pain, or you are in a classroom un and unable to understand what the teacher is talking about. The half of billion deaf community face this challenge in every single day of their life. And we are bridging this gap by providing sign language interpretation services to them. For 8,000 deaf users, only one sign language interpreter is available. Meet my co-founder, Vamik Hassan. He is deaf by birth. And he faced a lot of challenges while getting his education in Pakistan because of lack of sign language interpreter. His family decided to move to the US, uh, where he completed his, his computer engineering with the help of sign language interpreter. After 15 years of his stay in the US, he came back to Pakistan and uh, realized that the gap is still there. We are bridging this gap by uh, providing digital sign language interpretation services through our mobile app whenever, when, uh, wherever it is required. We have two um, products. One is um, DevTalk mobile application, and a second is DT360 AI solution. Currently, we are operating in five different countries. This is a, a screenshot of our mobile app where we are connecting deaf user with a qualified sign language interpreter. The key feature of this app are um, VOIP, group calling solution, and mobile wallet. Whereas DT360 is AI-driven solution uh, where we are translating text to sign and voice to sign. The user cases are among us. Uh, we are um, uh, making website accessible, we are making media channel accessible, uh, education and health services for them. For last four years of operation, we have rendered 1.5 million minutes of services. We have 45,000 plus active users. Uh, our LTM is $1.3 million and our uh, recurring revenue is 110K. We are not only a business case, but also creating a huge impact in the uh, life of persons with disabilities. More than 97,000 persons, uh, disabled persons, uh, uh, are using our services in, in terms of health, employment opportunities, and education. And we are uh, providing direct job opportunities to 1,800 sign language interpreters. The market size is 34 billion US dollars, and we are expecting to achieve 20% uh, in next five years uh, to become a, a unicorn. We are not alone in this market. Uh, we have a, a competition, but our value prop proposition is that we are 24 seven available. We are operating in six different languages, and we are just one click away from our users. Our revenue model is very simple, uh, B2B and B2C. In B2C, we charge per minute basis, is prepaid and cashless, whereas B2B is monthly subscription model. Uh, this is our um, partners to whom we are working for last uh, three or four years, and um, um, it, these are our um, all the partners to whom uh, we are providing our uh, services to them. Um, we have won few uh, international aw awards to gain international uh, recognition. We are the best startup of Asia Pacific back in 2019. This is the founding team. Uh, I am looking after the operation. Um, Vamik is looking after the technology, and Ali Shabir is looking af after the business side of uh, our company. We three are uh, persons with disabilities. Myself and uh, Ali is blind, and Vamik is deaf. This is our global team. Uh, you can see that our team is uh, diverse in terms of gender and in terms of disability. We are raising $500,000 uh, 
and uh, out of which 250 we have already raised and uh, we are ex expecting to raise 250 within a couple of months. We use this uh, um, money to expand our team to m make our uh, product AI a uh, bit better and also to uh, expand to the other markets. Will you help us to bridge that gap? Thank you. That was Steph Top from Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. And his presentation was exactly four minutes and 50 seconds. One more round of applause, please. <laughs> our startup should be ashamed for not keeping the time. Just kidding. Um, our next company comes from India. And we all know that plastic waste is a big, big issue. And they found a new, innovative way to deal with that. Here is Recircle. Thank you. So what most people see as waste, we see them as resources. And at ReCircle, we're on a mission to ensure resources are not wasted. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rahul Nainani, and I'm the co-founder and CEO at ReCircle. While we all do understand that waste is a massive problem, and plastic waste more so, uh, this is a global problem more so in India and Southeast Asia. I'm not going to spend time on the problem, but more on the solution. What we're building at ReCircle is a traceable and ethical reverse supply chain for plastics. We track plastic waste from collection to recycling to ensure that material stays in the ecosystem rather than reaching our landfills and ocean. We're a B2B company working towards stopping, by where we help businesses to stop plastic pollution while meeting their sustainable development goals. What we primarily offer is two major, si major solutions. One is we prof offer plastic credits where we help them offset their plastic footprint by buying plastic credits from us. And the other is where we work towards introducing ethically collected recycled plastic back into the supply chain of the businesses that we work with. How we're doing this is through a proprietary traceability tech platform called Clima One. Clima One essentially brings traceability and accountability in an otherwise informal and fragmented sector. We have an asset light partner based approach through which we are able to scale tremendously. On one end, we have collection partners, which are essentially informal scrap dealers and aggregators that we've been able to formalize through our supply chain. They help us collect, sort, segregate this material. We work towards formalizing them to ensure that there's no child labor, proper working conditions. They're able to give us the right quality and quantity of material. And on the other end, we work with waste processors or recyclers that help us actually manage this waste post it has been collected. Now, we track this from the collection till the waste recycling process, convert these into plastic credits, which we then sell to large FMCG companies that use this for the local compliance to meet with the plastic waste management rules, as well as to meet their global sustainable development goals. Businesses get a dashboard through which they are able to live track the material to see where it's being collected from and where it's being finally processed as well. Uh, we are already working with the leading companies across India. So the large companies like Unilever, Coca-Cola already are customers. And we also have a voluntary credits program through which we are working with local D2C companies that have sustainability at the, at the heart of their, of, their of their work that they're doing. Uh, in terms of our scale, impact is at the core of our work. We've recovered more than 100,000 tons of material throughout our journey, out of which 75,000 tons of material has been collected in the last financial year itself, which is equivalent to collecting almost 8,000 kgs of waste every hour, every day, from over 250 locations across India, while impacting the lives of more than 3,100 informal workers that are part of our supply chain. Now, as next steps, what we're working towards is that we've already got the traceability from the collection to the recycling. What we're now working towards is tracking this material post-recycling back into the supply chain of the same brands that we work with, thereby closing the loop on plastics and making sure that plastics stay in the ecosystem. Well, how we aim to do this is that we're going to have a small QR code at the back of the packaging of the product. When you as a consumer buys this product, you'll be able to scan to see where this material was collected, how was it recycled, and then how was it finally made into the new product, and where you buy it from the shelves from where you're from product from the shelves that you're buying it from. Now, we have a young and dynamic team. Uh, team comes with diverse backgrounds. Uh, we have a roughly about a team of 40 to 45 of us, but our advisors have, have, a, have a lot of integrity and a lot of uh, experience that they come with. Uh, Sodi Ji, who's the head of, who was the ex-head of Circular Economy at UNDP India, helps us on strategy. Nitin, our head of finance, has, uh, is managing, has got almost two decades of experience in the banking space. Girish has worked with over 300 startups across India as the head of uh, an incubation program. And then we have our team that manages different verticals. Coming to the numbers, uh, we've been cash flow positive for the last four years, growing 100% year on year. Last year, we did about $3.1 million in revenue with a 10% EBITDA margin as compared to uh, $1.5 million the year before that. 
We're looking at a strong and steady growth with about 20 million in the next three years. The growth will come in from two areas. One is to vertically integrate into the other scrap items. So we're looking at glass, textiles, as well as paper waste to explore into, and also looking at growth in terms of Southeast Asia. So we're looking at other areas which have similar ecosystems of informal scrap economy to actually explore, to expand into. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have funders uh, that have supported us, GSMA being one of them. Uh, and we've also been part of a, a couple of acceleration programs. Uh, we're currently raising a round. We recently closed our bridge round with uh, Flipkart, Acumen, and 3i on board. And we're raising a 1.5 million, 2 million balance round, which are happy to share details offline. Now, in the last five minutes, the collect these circles, collectors across India have collected more than 1,000 kgs of waste in real time. So I urge you guys to come and work with us to help create a larger impact with us. Thank you very much. So we circle from India, ladies and gentlemen. Um, another thing made of plastic that really surrounds us are the PCB boards that are in every single device. And our next company from Japan um, helps to solve this problem through a sustainable PCB. And actually, Mr. Simizu also has just driven in from the airport as we were presenting. So big round of applause for Elephant Tech. Hi, good afternoon. So, Anuha Seo. So, um, my name is Shinya Shimizu, the founder and CEO of Elephant Tech. So, Elephant Tech is reinventing the electronics manufacturing in a sustainable way. So, Elephant Tech is a Japan based startup that, raised, uh, that have raised 9 billion Japanese yen, which is like 70 million US dollars or something. And we have a first and only mass producer of inkjet printing based printed circuit boards and which actually achieves 75% reduction of carbon footprint during PCB manufacturing, which is innovative. So the problem is the uh, PCB industry. So have you ever been, you know, have you ever seen the PCB board, so which is used in every single device use, right? But PCB is very traditional old industry, as no one is actually innovating or disrupting this industry, the which, is, which has huge environmental impact. Actually, 10% of Apple's total carbon footprint is coming from PCB production, so which is significant. But you know, no one is solving this issue. The why this is so bad for environment is like, you know, the existing method of manufacturing is by nature bad for environment because it's subtractive method. So existing method is subtractive method, which means you know you first form a layer of copper and remove unnecessary part from the board, and you use the remaining part as a wiring. So which is literally a subtractive way of manufacturing, which is you know wasteful. So we invented a completely new way, the opposite way of manufacturing electronic circuits, which is additive manufacturing. We have a technology to print copper and then apply plating. So that's it, which is purely additive manufacturing. The idea itself is very simple, but the technology is so complicated. We have a technology to synthesize nano-sized copper particle, and we, ho we also have a technology to formulate the ink, kind of copper metal ink, and we also have a technology to design the printer to print those copper ink. So, you know, with this technology, we are mass producing this blend. And, you know, this is additive, so we don't waste some anything. So we can drastically reduce carbon footprint, copper usage, water usage without any green premium, so which is great technology. But, you know, it has a huge story behind it. I founded this company with a professor at the University of Tokyo in 2014, which is nine years ago. And, you know, the, at the beginning of this company, the technology was simply pathetic. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> very, you know, resolution is just one millimeter or something. The endurance is like, you know, one week, so which is definitely not for mass production. Then I spent six years on basic R&D. And in 2020, we built the world's first mass production line of inkjet printing based uh, printed circuit boards. And we are scaling that. So, you know, starting that point, and we are producing with a large scale. And so this is the printer uh, we designed and we are operating in our factory. So this is a literally a copper ink printer. 
and our printed circuit boards are actually used in the market. So, so our, ours are used, for example, in a display, so which you can buy in some stores, and our printed circuit boards are already used in the market, so which is significant, because the electronics industry is so conservative. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, getting used in real mass production has a huge challenges, but we have achieved it. So recently we had a huge release with Logitech, which is one of the biggest computer mass mass producer in Switzerland. And they, you know, apparently, so 70% of their carbon footprint is coming from PCB. And so, you know, PCB, sustainable PCB is something they want. And we are working with those companies, like Epson, Mitsui Chemical, and those Japanese electronics manufacturers. And we have, currently you have offices and have, you know, factories only in Japan, unfortunately. But you know we are planning you know to go global, and so this is our leadership team. So I myself was working for McKinsey before starting this company, but before that I was a researcher. So I, I'm also a CTO. I was a CTO actually in this company. So, um, so have those some you know collaborative opportunities. So you know, the first one is just you know consider use this sustainable circuit boards. I mean so this. We are producing single layer flexible circuit, which is a very simple one, but you know, it is always good to, so to start from simple one. So just consider using this flexible circuit boards. And we are also looking for opportunities for F FPCs for battery management system, especially for automotive applications. So which, you know, Korea is a huge market. So, you know, let's build it. We are looking for, you know, working with you to build a, you know, green future of electronics manufacturing. Elephant Tech from Japan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I think the immigration held him up a little bit, so it barely happens, but still sometimes. We're down to our last company. Uh, I know it's sad, but we've gone through already 15 of these amazing companies, and our last one comes from Indonesia. They're called Bioinertia, and they work with bioenergy. And here's to show you how they do this. Bioinertia, please. Good afternoon, my name is Rena, I'm from Bioinertia. Uh, so I would like to introduce, briefly introduce uh, our company. And so uh, if we take a look on the BPS data in 2019, there's uh, that there are 137.9 million tons of the coal manure that produce each year. And so statewide this is the problem. This waste is filling up, causing the causing the water to be polluted because of the indiscriminate of disposal of it. So however, this is also a potential of a more sustainable energy storages. And also so we can utilize this waste by implementing BIS, biogas integrated system. It converts manure into biogas that can be used for cooking and electricity needs. And the potential source of the electricity from waste can reach 50,000 megawatt. But for now, the utilization is only 3.25% or around the 1,000 1060 megawatt. It means that there are so much potential waiting to be used. And so this is the flow of how it BIS works. So basically the coal manure combined with water with the ratio 1 1 and it put it into the biodigester and the output of the biodigester itself uh, still contained with the impurities so it's need to be purified using purifier. So the purified biogas uh, then can be directly used as the fuel uh, for the generators and stoves. And then moreover, the product resulting from the inefficiency of the biodigester itself can be used as the fertilizer. So the user can get two benefits from one raw materials. So to implement the bi BIS itself, we have developed five products which are the biodigester, bio 
biogenerator, biogas purifier, and biogas stove, and also the IoT system. And for in the in the future, we are expecting to develop the biogas storage tanks and also biogas stations. So our vision is to educate the people of Indonesia about the importance of preserving the nature by switching to renewable energy so our future generation can have a decent natural environment. And then for uh, for now we are collaborating with the uh, with various agencies whether it's state, uh, private uh, and also Educational industry, in, in educational institution, and then this is what uh, we've reached from the 2021 until now, and then we projected to have goals in five years. Uh, we our, our business uh, is simple; it's both B two B and B two C. This is our milestone, and this is our core team. We are looking forward to collaborate with you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a big round of applause for the 16 amazing innovators that we had today? Incredible presentations. Thank you so much. You guys are great. That's a wrap for the global, uh, our digital transformation acceleration summit showcase of our innovative tech companies. Um, now you see why we don't have Q&A because we want as much time possible to showcase our technology. But we do have our networking break coming up. We do have our um, evening reception hosted by the GDIN for you guys to talk and explore collaboration possibilities. We've spent the last 15, sorry, 90 minutes talking about AI, voting, smart factory, saving us from fires, from ulcers, from diabetic ulcers, from you know, cloud hospitals uh, to, do, to cow dung. Uh, but they have one thing in common, which is to accelerate digital transformation. And that's why we are here, and that's why these innovators are the VIPs of the day. Thank you very much. I think there will be a break of 20 minutes. Please come back at 3.50 for the wrap-up session, wrap-up panel, and the awards as well. Thank you very much. So, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, please go and have your, your coffee and tea. Now, the most important thing is, uh, I think, um, uh, Sachin forgot to emphasize one thing. Uh, from 4.40 to 5 o'clock, we will actually have the awards you know, because we'll be calculating the figures, okay, uh, aggregating the figures to, to, to find the grand prize winner and the winners from the four verticals, okay? So please hang around until then. Don't go, all right? Thank you. <laughs>